What is going on, you Stark Raving Lunatics? We're here to talk about Luna Classic for the day. There's been an eruption in conflict over the last several hours that we're starting to see play out for a specific purpose. And that specific purpose uh, might just be noble in intention, but um, you, you, you're, what, we're, what we're arguing right now is spirit. And by the way, you will hear me talk about uh, this spirit, if you will, from time to time. And the reason for that is because we should make no bones about this, okay? I'm going to go over this. You know what? Before I do this, let's talk about a little bit about news because this is kind of important. So first, thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure you hit the like button on your way in. And let's kick this off with a little refresher course of some information. First, uh, Terra dot underscore... Terra underscore money. Uh, Terraform Labs has opened up the shuttle bridge. So if you have Ethereum wrapped Lunk or UST or BNB wrapped uh, or, or Harmony Network, you can move it back over into the Terra Classic ecosystem. But you can only do that through about October 30th at a guess. September 30th is when the bankruptcy hearing ends and you have 30 days after that. That also means that they're winding down operations. Proposal 4818 will be the final chain upgrade that gets implemented on the Luna blockchain. And guess what? Uh, at this point, what that means is there's no real difference inherently between Luna and Luna Classic. You're basically dealing with two of the same chains, both of which will be unsupported by Terraform Labs, but which, uh, in my opinion, we probably have Luna Classic with a much higher base and a lot more development going on, which would potentially lead to Luna being abandoned by some of the developers so that they, they start to come over here and that would be uh, an incredible move. Now, the third piece to that is, remember, Terraform Labs and by proxy Luna Foundation Guard, because they are covered in the lawsuit, will have to burn all of their tokens, both in Luna and Luna Classic and USTC, and that is going to be a monumental level of burn. Also, in two days, Binance is going to do their next burn for Luna Classic, and based on volume, I only think it's going to be about a one point, let's guess 1.2 billion for, for the month. At, at, at best because you know volume trading is down a little bit in meme coins uh, altcoins kind of everywhere except for a few majors so we'll see less burn but we still will see a significant burn over the last couple of days that should lead to a little bit of a spike in the price now sustaining that is going to be the question but we're not going to be able to do that without a little bit of help and support now let's talk about the next piece of news before we get into that and that is luna classic struggles to overcome key resistance is there a big drop ahead and uh look we've talked about this over and over and over again and i will go back and i will show you on the chart you know we, we can't get to the nine level at this point right uh we we started to 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 break down back into these previous levels now some of this has to do with the broader market when i look at this and when i and when you say to me hey uh bro why is it dumping well i mean bitcoin chart uh you, you know if, if you just grant me here that you use your eyes when you're when you're investing uh, to, to look at charts and, and stuff like that. It's the same thing when you look at this is the same thing when you look at Luna Classic It's the same thing. Okay, so you know with, with very little uh, Dissimilarity, you know 98% 95% accuracy uh, Luna Classic is doing what the broader markets doing because the market is made in Luna Classic just like on Bitcoin Just like on Ethereum by market makers now there's going to be an outlier here and there every once in a while you will see something that that looks pretty good you might see a, a just a random pump off some kind of news but generally speaking the market makers are controlling the market right now and if that is the case then we can't go anywhere until the market makers decide to move and one of the things that moves the market with luna classic is the burn so we could see a, a nice little spike coming in the next couple days but again until we break above nine thousand we're not going anywhere uh in, in fact if you look over here you know we we had this descending sort of channel broke out uh but then kind of went sideways and got you know just just stuck right here at nine thousand until we break this resistance we're not going anywhere so um um, what we're talking about here is this is what it looks like when you look at the liquidity pool right now for long and short positions. Now, if you're a market maker, where are you going to go? Well, let me 
unfortunately be honest with you s around 62 63 uh if i'm a heat seeker market maker i would be dumping my tokens to get the price down into this range right now in order to knock out this liquidity because then that would give me new buyers stepping in to fill those orders and then pushing the price up uh, by me re-entering the market with some other people seeing a pump at this level right here. This gives me an opportunity to attack, right? So that's what I would expect uh, is potentially in play. And that's what they're referring to when they're talking about this because it seems like there's kind of a... Um, there's kind of a range here and and the range high right now again nine it, it, four zeros nine okay uh, and, and basically right here the the point four eight seven nine one levels were the short-term bullish target but we did not get in there swing traders could use a price bounce to look for opportunities to sell long now um, that's where we are right now this this range right here ends up causing people to sell off and and that's what the swing traders are doing so Keep that in mind uh, as you're, you're, you're buying. It's a good, perfect opportunity for accumulation. But let's talk now about the problems. Da da! The problems. Everybody's starting to fight amongst themselves uh, because uh, that's what people do. All right. So we've got Bull Boss 5 out here who wants to tombstone Jesus is Lord 2. Now, look, I don't like Jesus is Lord 2. And I, I really don't like the fact that he has. A couple of validates but you know what there's a lot of people that have a couple of valid it's not just jesus is lord now the reason that he wants to tombstone it and that is to end it is because he's circumventing the spirit of the rules now if you click on this you'll see um the terror classic community implemented a governance rule known as the dynamic commission to prevent centralization and promote equitable vp distribution among validators this rule adjusts the commission rate based on the validators voting power increasing the rate for the voting power uh, as the voting power grows. Despite this rule, a validator operating under the name Jesus is Lord created a second validator called Jesus is Lord 2. This action appears to be a deliberate attempt to circumvent the dynamic commission mechanism, thereby fragmenting their voting power across two validators to maintain a lower commission rate for each. This practice not only violates the spirit of the governance rule, but also sets a dangerous precedent that could lead to similar tactics by other validators. Notice, in fact, we're talking about Jesus is Lord. Now, I don't like Jesus is Lord. I don't like the fact that he has two validators and he uses it but there's no rule against it and there's no spirit when it comes to rules there either is a rule or there is not a rule now when you're in governance this is going to be proposed uh, to the DAO and it will come up for a vote and if it comes up for a vote then you'll vote your conscience and if somebody doesn't vote the way that you want and you're validating with them remove your stake from them and go with somebody who you do appreciate who votes the way that you want uh, your vote to be cast so and, and that's very simple right uh, now again I pointed out they're not the only that that have multiple validate but again there's no rule against it there's just this feeling of decentralization you'll you'll hear you'll hear people like happy caddy crypto talk about it all the time he is a single validator other people have more validators and could they unfairly sway it the answer to that is uh, yes a hundred percent but let's go back and let's kind of look at some of these validators right here because I've told you so far that one of the, the, the absolute worst, in my opinion, players in the game is All Notes. Why? Because All Notes has 13.4%. We're not complaining about All Notes despite that they have 13.4% because they only have one. But do they? No, they don't. We're, the, the most centralized aspect of this entire ecosystem is all nodes. All nodes controls 13% controls of the validation, number one. Number two, almost to a man, every single one of these validators is leasing from all nodes. Now, how many of the people who are leasing from all nodes got a discount in their leasing rate or leasing fee as long as they vote along with all nodes? We don't know the answer to that. Uh, could there be an answer to that? Yeah. They're 100% could. Uh, as a matter of fact, somebody like Happy Caddy Crypto has pointed out multiple times that some of these validators along the way conveniently vote against the betterment of this ecosystem and they vote together in it. So is there collusion in some form? Probably. So uh, why don't we start at the top and why don't we stop picking on the people at the bottom? Now, when I say that, when I say that, 
Uh, let, let's go back here and, and let's look at the, the one place like this right here. Uh, Jesus is Lord voted no with veto on the Juris Protocol reband. Now, why? It is my opinion, by the way, that Jesus is Lord in the Juris Protocol reband is not the bad actor that we would normally say that they are, or that I would normally say, not we, uh, that I would normally say they are. And the reason for that is very simple. Uh, I, it is my belief that Jesus is Lord just says, you know what? They can't do anything. Rather than rebrand, why don't you stick to your guns? Because a parody is perfectly acceptable even under U.S. law. So um, I, I think that, you know, that, 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 I, I think that the rebranding is great. Like I, I want it to be rebranded, but I understand why uh, somebody like Jesus is Lord would say no. Now also, let's point this out right here. You see right below that, zero fees and USTC airdrops long community. Well, guess what happened now? Uh, once you get through this, Jesus is Lord validator number two. Uh, who's the next one that they attack? Zero fees and USTC airdrops lunk community so um the background uh and and they're they're explaining this uh the the dynamic commission this rule ensures that the voting power for a validator increases the commission rate also increases proportionately this is to prevent the centralization of power and to promote a healthy distribution of vp among validators and then the minimum commission rate of 2.5 this this maintain to maintain fairness and sustainability a minimum commission rate of 2.5 percent was established for all validators this rule prevents the exploitation of zero commission rates which leads to unhealthy competition centralization of power and potential long-term harm to the network Despite these rules, the validator 0% fee and USTC airdrops has chosen to operate with a zero commission rate. While this validator may return the commission to delegators, this practice still undermines the spirit of the governance rules. So, um, again, spirit of the governance rules, um, if they're violating the rule, then you would vote against it. If they're violating the spirit of the rule, there, there's no the spirit of, okay? Uh, so again, this is going to be for a DAO governance vote, and you know, again, if they if they vote, if your validator votes the way that you want them to, continue to stick with them. If they don't, get out, go somewhere else, uh, go to somebody who who will validate with. So this is a complicated situation, and there is some argument that that's going on right here. Um, and, and in fact, uh, this is the the this is what took place between Long Peace. We have validators using commission for token airdrops, NFT prop projects. Yet I'm being targeted for giving my own money back directly to the holders. My goal is to give back to the community and support Lung's growth for everyone's benefit. Using my own money to benefit the community is within the rules and aligns with my commitment to the community's success. Okay. Uh, and, and by the way, there's a lot of attack being done over here. And then Happy Caddy Crypto comes in and says, uh, while your intention to support the community and the growth of Lunk are clear, the approach you're taking has broader implications that can ultimately harm the ecosystem. By using commission-based cashback to attract and retain delegations, you're creating a system that primarily benefits holders rather than the blockchain itself. Uh, their response Responsibilities to the people that uh, that, that uh, altruism is what everybody would like to see, but that's not the rule. The the rule he, he's following the rule. So um, what everybody wants at this point, what it looks like people want is kumbaya and everybody to just work for the betterment of it, and that's that's great. I mean, it's a noble cause, but that's not how things work. This is the real world. So uh, this is very difficult. And, and of course, Lunk Peace did have a response here. I know there are different opinions on how best to support the network, and I respect that. My intention is... Guys, we're in accumulation phase, and Cryptonomy.finance is the place for you to go in order to stake. You guys have seen what I've staked so far. So what I'm going to do is I have 10,000 XRP, six months. Again, wondering what the bull phrase is going to look like. 32% yield off of that. So off of 10,000 XRP, I should have 13,246 XRP when I'm done, minus fees. Boom. We're ready for the bull run. We're going 20,000 into the bronze level. All right, we got $20,000 into this pool. We're in the bronze pool right now. You can see the details of what I've done so far, uh, how much I've earned off of it. Uh, my earnings have been just exponential. Why have they been exponential, you might ask yourself? Well, these guys are investing into each one of these launches and look at some of the results that they're getting. They're ch they're picking and choosing the best launches. ZK Sync, four and a half X, uh, Ethora Fun three and a half X, Sharp Psy, 3.5 X, Coin Pays, 4.7 X. The, they're looking for real solid projects to invest in, and then they're getting this big yield out of it. So if you want to sign up at cryptonomy.finance today, and remember this bull run is coming, don't miss out. We'll talk to you again very soon. To create a system driven by greed, but rather to reward the community for their support. Wow. And um, a, a, uh, Happy Caddy goes, what about double or triple noting? So, and, and there are people that do double and triple notes. There, there, there certainly are. Um, uh, however, however, um, 
if you have, it, it, here's the thing. Is it possible for me to have a validator node and for me to be friends with Happy Caddy Crypto and have a Believes Crypto and then do a podcast with Happy Caddy Crypto and we both have our own node? And for somebody, that's going to be a conflict of interest because we're operating and we're teaming together. Now, if, if, if I, is that the case or not? You know what I'm saying? So uh, I think that there's some questions that can be raised here and there's fair questions to be raised. But look, if you have a project and you have a node for that project, then you have another project and you have a node for that project. You have a node for another project and you have somebody managing it. Is that different? Is that, do you see what I'm saying? Like there's a, there's a very weird sort of purity test that people would like you to pass that, that that may not hold up under the rule under the rules that's the important and again unless we start with all nodes it, it is my opinion by the way but unless we start with all nodes everybody here is full of shit okay nobody here is looking out for your better interest from a decentralization standpoint unless we start with the biggest transgressor of them all and we're not doing that we're attacking the smaller guys in this context so um i mean okay cool you don't like uh you don't like the centralization but turns out you like the centralization and it's because all nodes represents this gigantic thing and you can't do anything about it so then you say oh, well what happens if they leave if they leave then we're going to be screwed no we're going to be decentralized you see what i'm saying because at the end of this, to me, it's still a money grab for, I mean, and I don't think everybody is bad. Again, like, like there's there's a lot of good people in here. I think Happy Caddy Crypto is a good guy. Um, but I also think RexYZ, who's a sponsor of my channel, by the way, is a good guy. So there are a lot of good guys out here that just have differences in opinion about what should happen or what they would like to see happen and how uh, they they would either centralize, decentralize, how, how things would uh, become better or worse in their opinion. But let me tell you something. Here's, here's what's going on right now. Everybody who wants this thing to be completely and utterly in uh, decentralized. Cool story, bro. However, it was no way decentralized when it went up to a $70 billion market cap with Terra and Luna. So the fact that you want decentralization is great, but at the end of the day, what drives a community, what drives, uh, we don't even have a website. Let's put it that way. The, 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 the result of decentralization at this point, I'm going, I'm going a little bit of a rant here, but the result of decentralization at this point is we don't even have a website. We can't even vote to make a website. We don't even have a website, okay? There are, uh, in the top 200 crypto, in the top 200 cryptos, which we are in the top 200 cryptos. We're the only one that doesn't have a website. Now you, in your purity test, are talking about, well, we're decentralized. All nodes is the most centralized entity in this place. So to me, there's a lot of hypocrisy that goes on here. That doesn't change my support, by the way, because I'm not a maxi. I understand. I don't like all nodes, but I understand. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't like Jesus is Lord, but I understand. So this is going to be a fight, and it will be incredibly interesting to see how this fight uh, resolves itself. It's going to come up for governance and we're going to have to make a decision and that's going to pre predicate what happens going into the future. But let me say this, I, I, I have a problem with Jesus is Lord one and Jesus is Lord two. And I tell you, you shouldn't validate with them because uh, that is potentially unfairly giving them additional power. But here's the thing, if they're voting the way that you think they should, then validate with them. If they're not voting, then don't validate with them. Don't give them a reward because they're manipulating you with the word Jesus in the title. That's all I really, that's all I really think, okay? Now, you do what you want. You do what's best for you. But just hear me, hear me now when I say this. Now, let's look at price action uh, because, oh my God, we're running out of time. So, uh, Lunk's trading at four zeros eighty two right now. We had a very, very nice spike over the last couple of times trying to get out of this channel. Now, we are not breaking towards the upside. And in fact, we are forming a bearish trend right now. If you see this right here and you see we're minting lower highs every single time. We're minting higher lows every every single time. You see that we're in this uh, we're in this sort of pattern right now and we're at the bottom of the trend line. So it is entirely 
entirely possible that if the market kind of flips on a dime, that we break out and we come up here and test this 200. Again, move, pushing up into and above into that nine realm is certainly a possibility. But when you see this sort of momentum off of a peak over here, that's usually a sign of downward momentum. Now, that is not exactly uh, playing out the same fashion on some of these other cryptos. So ultimately, I don't think that this structure holds. And I think that even though it looks bearish, that I think we're ultimately bullish, okay? Uh, and I hope this makes sense to you because I think that Bitcoin probably is set to rip uh, and start to restore some of this and go back to the 65 and even 68,000 range very, very soon. We're at the bottom of the channel on Bitcoin. And this is not a Bitcoin video, but you get my point. So I do think that we'll probably see a pretty big move coming very, very soon. So um, that's what I think is happening. Uh, U.S. market is on the clock right now, so you'll probably see some taking because the U.S. market is a bunch of takers. Uh, they're not a bunch of makers at this point, so uh, you'll see that. Now, volume-wise, uh, down again, big time. Volume-wise, down again, big time. Uh, Volume-wise, over here on, on meme coins and stuff, boys up 57% on the day. And I had $50 worth of boys tokens, right, and it's 110 right now, so it's going crazy like 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 boys is having a really really good run uh, juris protocol same thing up 12 and a half percent on the day so we're getting a favorable pairing on a lot of these different a lot of these different projects so this is a pretty good day overall uh in, in this ecosystem uh, as far as voting and stuff like that nothing really going on other than uh juris protocol rebrand rebrand uh and then uh, let's move on here to the burns 1.3 billion in burns for the day uh terra casino make sure that you're checking out terra casino they're burning for Luna Classic. They're the number seven all time. They burn more than all nodes, which I just told you had so many different things. And by the way, when you look at it, and, and one of the things that people have had a problem with is, um, um, you know, multiple nodes, right? Well, uh, I mean, Terra Casino uh, is owned by the same uh, as Terraport Finance, but guess what? They're in the top 12 of people who are burning Luna Classic. They're burning more than Happy Caddy Crypto. Do you see what I'm saying? I mean, I hope this makes sense. Um, all nodes. One of them, Terra Casino burns more than all nodes. I mean, I hope this makes sense. I hope we're looking at this the same way. And if you say, yeah, but, mm -mm, there's a time for everything. There's a time for burn. A time for burning. That's right now. That's reduce the supply. That's what it's all about. So let's reduce some supply and stop crying about the semantics of everything. And let's start to burn some tokens. That's what matters. So anyway, uh, and if you haven't already, if you're trading these mean coins, if you go, look, go get you some boys, go, that was pretty, <laughs> I didn't mean that. Uh, go get you some boys token, uh, go get some jurists, you know, go over here and do this. You can do this all at Terraport. Uh, you can also earn if you stake, there's two spots still open, two slots still open. Uh, there is some plenty of yield farming that's still available uh, by project. All you have to do is come up and down here, find the one that you like the most and then start yield farming with that one. And then of course we got Rocket, which is still coming out for the launch pad. Now, that is my time. I gotta go. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate you and every one of you. I know I talked a lot today, but I'm passionate about uh, my opinion if I'm not passionate about a certain project or something like that. So you guys let me know what you think in the comments down below. And remember, this is not financial advice, but I'm always right.